So here in this verse, <clears throat> when Brahma was deliberating with his sons, Lord Vishnu rode tremendously like a great mountain, which is none other than Lord Varha. <clears throat> So it appears Prabhupada is explaining that although it may look very mythological or fictitious, even mountains can roar because they also are living entities. <clears throat> it appears that great hills and mountains also have their roaring power and in this verse, Lord Vishnu's roar, that is Varaha's roar, was compared to that of a great mountain. So here, in this chapter, we have been seeing that how Brahma, who is engaged in the service of the Lord, he, is, he has been interested the task of creation, the secondary creation, the Lord being the primary creator. And uh, we also saw in this exercise how that when we are engaged in the service of the Lord, then the Lord reciprocates with the devotee in wonderful ways. I think I've shared this as time of Śrīla Prabhupāda earlier, when Śrīla Prabhupāda was having, was giving association to his senior disciples, some sannyasis were also there. And often Prabhupāda would, just to test their understanding of Krishna consciousness, would get into some debate or an argument, just to check their understanding of Krishna Consciousness. So Prabhupada asked, why do you all believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God? Our society is International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So very basic question, why do you believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God? So one of them said that because in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has said. So Prabhupada just to give a pushback, said, uh, what is the proof that Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna? You are simply quoting Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Bhagavan Uvaja. What is the proof that actually it is spoken by Krishna? It may be a blind faith. So then one devotee said, <clears throat> Prabhupada, we may not have seen Krishna, but we have seen you. You are a bona fide, true representative of Krishna. You are saying Krishna is supreme personality of God. Then Prabhupada said, how can you put faith in an old man? Generally, when people become old, they become senile. Beki beki baate karte. So how can you put faith in an old man? I may be saying so many things. You put your faith. Then uh, another devotee said, Prabhupada, right now we are not purified, but when we get purified, we can see Krishna face to face. Pratyaksha vagamam susukum kartum avyayam. So then Prabhupada immediately went. That means, when you get pure, right now you're not seeing, right? Right now it is just blind faith. So whatever, after all Prabhupada is Prabhupada, he knows everything. So whatever argument they could muster, they could give, everything Prabhupada defeated. Then Prabhupada said, we believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead because when we serve Him, 
we can experience a very sublime and sweet reciprocation of the Lord, which cannot be expressed in words, which can only be felt. Actually, what Prabhupada is saying, true, we have not seen Krishna in that sense. Although, yes, we have faith, deities are none other than Krishna, personally. <clears throat> Bhagavad Gita, we have faith in words of Prabhupada. There are so many quote-unquote godmen speaking so many things. And we also know so many godmen who are very, very famous are not are speaking something which is not correct. So we all have tasted Krishna reciprocating. In fact, that reciprocation of the Lord is very intense in the beginning. When we all come to Krishna consciousness, The Lord reciprocates, <clears throat> we get very sweet taste of Krishna consciousness and later on the Lord to some extent withdraws as is the case with Narada Muni also. Then the Lord wants you to work hard for it. First trailer milta, trailer. Trailer mein pura movie ka saransh hota hai. So we all get to experience that sweet nectar, sublime Krishna consciousness before joining, when we come to Krishna Consciousness. So, <clears throat> and Krishna also says, as you surrender, so shall I reciprocate. This is a very interesting uh, concept, or not concept, I would say, fact, truth wonderful instruction, a reality, a principle. As you surrender, so shall I reciprocate. Our progress in Krishna consciousness is how much we unconditionally serve Krishna, surrender to Krishna, sacrifice for Krishna, give for Krishna, act for Krishna, work for Krishna, Yesterday also in lecture, Prabhupada said, what is Krishna consciousness? Everything we do from morning, it's for Krishna. We speak for Krishna, talk for Krishna, work for Krishna, walk for Krishna, eat for Krishna. <clears throat> we as conditioned souls, we all have a natural tendency to to not get into any mess. Generally, there are some people who love getting into mess. They create mess also. But generally, as that's why a lot of people think spirituality, shanti, 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 which is elusive, which we are not getting. So there is spiritual life, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Nobody wants to get into mess. Nobody wants to uh, take unnecessarily, like we talked about, we all want pleasure and we want to avoid pain. But in Krishna consciousness, it is a little different. That is at a material platform. What is driving us is pain and pleasure. In Krishna Consciousness, we get reciprocation of the Lord and experience transcendental pleasure if we apparently take material pain in the service of the Lord. It's a reverse thing. Not reverse thing, it's a... Material pleasure, everyone is. You go to a movie, you get material pleasure. You engage in a lot of activities, material activities, which gives pleasure. Eat nice thing, you get pleasure. And every, the whole world is driven by that principle. What will give me pleasure? It motivates me. I, I 
I am driven towards it and what will give me pain, I shun, I run away from it or I work my way away from it. Arjuna, in the first chapter, if you see, he was, that's why Krishna in the second chapter beginning, he says, how come these impurities have come upon you? You're talking like a learned man. He was also demonstrating this principle or principle of a conditioned soul. Or what is that? To shun pain and to seek pleasure. What is the use of fighting? It will be bloodshed, unnecessary killing will happen, sin will fall upon me. And he was learned man, he was not an ignorant man. What is the use of kingdom which will be tainted by the blood of our own kinsmen, relatives? Better to live by begging. And also very profound reasoning. If this killing happens, no doubt we will get the kingdom, but what about the whole, uh, so many women will become widows, they will become unchaste, men will exploit them, unwanted progeny will happen, Varna Sankara will be born, whole dynasty will be lost. And for what? Because we wanted kingdom. We will enjoy kingdom, but what will be the reaction? So, what was his thought process? Same thing, avoid pain, seek pleasure. But Krishna chastised him. And we know, Mamanus Mare Yudhicha. He fought the battle. And Krishna says, while you are fighting the battle, you think of me. And generally, we also have a feeling that if you have to think of Krishna, it has to be a very peaceful environment. You know, battlefield, thinking of Krishna, I mean, it looks little contradictory. If you are somewhere sitting in lonely, secluded place, yes, you can think of Krishna. Peacefully, you can think of Krishna. Whereas here, in a battlefield, Mamanusmarya Yudhyacha, and it's a ghastly warfare, bloodshed. You will see people shrieking in pain, dying. And then in that situation, you have to remember Krishna. So Arjuna was reluctant and he gave many reasons. Krishna, again in the second chapter, gave wonderful instructions, gave another perspective. And Arjuna decided to fight and we know how he fought and eventually became victorious. <clears throat> so we also as conditioned soul have that natural inclination. Anything which is problematic, anything which is messy, we shun. And Krishna in the Gita says, as you surrender, that means to the extent you act for my pleasure, not driven by your pain and pleasure, to that extent I will reciprocate. And Prabhupada, our spiritual master, he demonstrated that. Just visualize, many times people have aspirations, they have goals because they have something lacking. Why do people have goals? A lot of people are talking about goals, focus, Because actually something is lacking and they feel by achieving that there will be fulfillment, there will be contentment, there will be satisfaction, there will be experience of happiness. That is what is propelling everyone to set goals and achieve goals. Everyone has goals, may not be written, but everyone is gunning towards something. Srila Prabhupada, when he was in Vrindavan, a very, very, you know, we know Vrindavan, very special, holy place, fully spiritual, 
जय राधे 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 एवरीवेयर एंड स्टेइंग इन नन अदर देन राधा दामोदर मंदिर आरती इज हैपनिंग कीर्तन सर हैपनिंग ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज हैपनिंग एंड द समाधिज आर देयर ऑल द गोस्वामी दिस थिंग इज देयर श्री प्रभुपाद लेफ्ट दैट प्लेस and what was he experiencing when for fulfilling the order of shila prabhu of his spiritual master sea sickness and dizziness vomiting and went to america with no place see he could have settled there and and mind can always say ke i am already 70 years and we have examples in our parampara also bhajananandis you can always say that i am purifying the whole universe by chanting in vrindavan which is true also gor kishor das baba ji didn't go away. he was just chanting uh, haridas thakur it is not uh, if your mind you have to convince yourself you have examples also so shri prabhupa left went to america He is in downtown Bowery. <laughs> Drunkards are there. Hippies are there. He is cooking for them. After they eat, he is cleaning the floor. He is washing the vessels. He took so much pain, and we see that how when a devotee goes out of his way to serve the Lord, takes. apparently material pain material anxiety apparently again from superficially it looks he is trying to distribute back to god at a bull is coming and goading so when we take we experience a sweet reciprocation of the lord which we cannot experience when we are gunning for material peace समटाइम डिवोटिस कैन ऑल्सो गेट इन दिस क्यों झंझट में पढ़ना अपना जितना होता है करो वाई गेट इन टू ऑल दिस ट्रेवल इन ऑल वाई स्ट्रगल एंड इट इज पॉसिबल ऑल्सो बियॉन्ड अ पॉइंट इट्स अ वॉलेंटियर दिस थिंग यू कैनॉट फोर्स एनी बडी दिस यू कैन फोर्स अ हॉर्स टू वॉटर बट यू कैनॉट फोर्स इट टू drink if you force also it will it will put this tongue also it will look like he is drinking but nothing is going inside that you cannot check so <clears throat> but if we take that anxiety for krishna to fulfill the orders of krishna the predecessor acharyas distribute more books build temples preach the message of krishna consciousness you have to get into mess again transcendental pleasure superficially if you see there is mess but when we do that for krishna not for your personal gain not for your personal name and fame not for your uh you know personal satisfaction and again it is not a binary logic it is not purely you will do only for krishna there will be some element which is for us whatever it is it could be 70 30 it could be 80 20 it could be, whatever it is whatever percentage it is for krishna to that extent krishna reciprocates and that reciprocation is very very divine that reciprocation is what will make us genuinely advance in krishna consciousness which is demonstrated by arjuna of all the yogis krishna is telling you are the yogi naam api sarvesha madgatar antaratmana he is a family man is a kshatriya is a warrior but krishna is saying you are the best of yogis so <clears throat> here brahma also you see in this he is interested the task of secondary creation he is engaged in tapa 
and he is very obediently although he has no clarity how the creation will happen he is he is going about the task which is allocated to him the service which is allocated to him so i have some quotes of shri prabhupad on this thing doing service for krishna <coughs> related to what we were discussing one should work only for krishna it does not matter what kind of work one engages but that work should be done only for krishna no work is abominable if performed in the service of supreme lord again when we start as i said we all are conditioned souls so there will be an element of likes dislikes i like doing it i don't like doing it which arjuna voiced in the first chapter i don't like fighting what is the use of fighting own kinsmen so krishna consciousness is where we try to to rise above this this platform of material like and dislike material it i feel good i don't feel good and do what is assigned to us in the service of the lord when a particular type of occupation is performed for the satisfaction of supreme lord all the defects in that particular occupation are purified there could be shortcoming from our side there could be mistakes which we have committed krishna condones all this if it is being done for the satisfaction of the lord we should never sit idle and ask krishna to do everything that is the teaching of bhagavad gita it is clearly said in the gita yudhyasya cha mam anusmarya again we can have a understanding that who am i to do anything krishna is the doer krishna will do temple will be built by krishna and prabhupad very nicely explains another this thing your ambition for chanting hare krishna exclusively is very good but sacrificing the result of action is good a concrete example is arjuna he fought very chivalrously under the instruction of lord and the lord certified him to be the best devotee and friend of the lord so there is no distinction between chanting and offering the results of one's activity sometimes under the garb of chanting people take to the habit of laziness sometimes under the garb of chanting people take to the habit of laziness it gets justified i am not going out i am the singer i am chanting i am reading simply we are working for krishna there will be some result loss or gain if there is loss that is krishna's if there is gain that is also krishna's not that loss is krishna's and gain is mine no not like that everything is krishna we have to work for krishna so if we sweat for krishna take austerity for krishna take some pain apparently go in some mess prabhupad was prabhupad we know this famous quote where prabhupad says to further the mission of lord chaitanya we have to do so much managerial work but lord chaitanya mahaprabhu promises because it has to be done to further this mission one will not be entangled by such work because it has to be done for the service of the lord somebody has to do administrative work somebody has to do management which is messy and when we are doing that when we are situated in that consciousness when we are endeavoring with that mentality i want to serve krishna 
I'm trying my best. I may not be liking that. When we try our best to our best capacity to achieve something, then by Krishna's grace, all of a sudden we will see everything is there. This sort of help from Krishna is transcendental happiness. Otherwise, devotees can find spiritual life very hackneyed, very monotonous. Because we have given up material pleasure and we are also not experiencing transcendental pleasure. Karmis, they may experience pain, but then they say work hard, party harder. This is their philosophy. That's why you see weekends, pubs, bars, all are full. Work hard, party harder. That is their philosophy. And they also justify, we have worked hard. We have the right to drink and get... Hindi is at Tali. <laughs> we have the right. <clears throat> so when we take austerity, apparently take some hardship, even though we may not be feeling any material pleasure, we may feel material anxiety, we may feel material pain, Again, material, it's not material because it may appear. It may appear to us also because we are conditioned. Then Prabhupada saying, all of a sudden we see Krishna reciprocating and that sort of help from Krishna is transcendental happiness. When does spiritual life become hackneyed? When we are not experiencing transcendental pleasure and we are also trying to shun material pleasure. So, neither we are getting that nor with the same. What is karma is doing? They are getting material pain, but they compensate by, you know, trying different ways to get material pleasure. That's a different thing. Material pleasure is short-term gain, eventually leads to bondage. So, we have to work sincerely and because Krishna is in everyone's heart, there will be no difficulty to have the necessary facilities. Whatever allocation of duty there may be, if we try to execute such specific duty sincerely, that alone can make us much more advanced in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes a mind can also say, no, this is all philosophy. This is all philosophy. Real life is different. Real life we have to be we have to be intelligent. We should be selective. We should be we should not take up something which we cannot do. Although all the events were prearranged by Krishna, a devotee must try his best to serve the purpose of Krishna. Krishna himself is all powerful, but it is not the devotee should Therefore, sit idle and leave everything to him. This instruction is also found in the Gita. Although Krishna was doing everything for Arjuna, Arjuna never sat down idle, like, idly like a non-violent gentleman. Rather, he tried his best to fight the battle and be victorious. See, Prabhupada uses the word non-violent gentleman. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work binds one to this material world. If we do not act in Krishna consciousness, we shall be entangled like silkworms in the cocoon. So, <clears throat> there is a very, there are many traps also in spiritual life. That's why to get mature understanding, it takes time. It requires association of devotees. It requires proper understanding. There is no difference between chanting for Krishna consciousness and working for Krishna consciousness. On the transcendental platform, they are one. But we must be guided by the spiritual master about this oneness. We should not manufacture our own oneness. 
वट इज मैन्युफैक्चर ओन वननेस विम्सिकली थिंकिंग द चैंटिंग एंड वर्किंग फॉर कृष्णा इज वन एंड द सेम सो चैंटिंग इज दिस थिंग सो प्रभुपद से जस्टिफाई आर लेजीनेस इन द नेम ऑफ चैंटिंग we must be guided by the spiritual master about this oneness we can always say chanting and serving krishna everything is one so i'll do what is pleasing to my mind it's one everything is one chanting serving krishna eating prasadam everything is krishna non different advaya gyana so i'll do what is pleasing to me there was one devotee <clears throat> I remember in Bangalore when I had just joined. He was much, many more years in the movement, and uh, he would come in front of the deities and you know, just for fifteen, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, with half eyes closed, you know, with folded hands. He would be taking darshan, and I would feel so small in front of him. How much devotion he has! How much bhakti he has! I don't have one hundredth of it. when i come in front of the deities that no bhava is there and he has so much of love so much of this thing he is it comes and then this was before my joining i used to visit the temple so i had again we all do our own calculations so in my calculation he was the most advanced devotee in the temple that was my calculation so uh, the kind of respect i would give this thing that he is the most advanced he is the one who has actually developed his love for god at the stage of bhava and prema but when i joined you know when you live in community i could see that how that was very superficial any service you sign which is this thing no 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 quickly do the services and try to run away half heartedly do services so it is that's why it is said it's very difficult to uh, only krishna knows what's going in our heart what is our motivation what is driving us superficially it is very difficult to say somebody who is arjuna was fighting in the battle he is the greatest yogi for whom is he fighting for whose pleasure is he working why is taking this getting into all this mess simply we have to desire to please him and not desire anything for ourselves then we become simply instruments for his will that is the important essence of krishna consciousness we should not desire anything for ourselves otherwise again in the beginning stages krishna consciousness is there but it's a means to fulfill my desire even peace of mind is subtle sense gratification sense gratification can be gross because senses mind is also one of the senses it is pleasing to the mind peaceful mind shant it's also one kind of sense gratification just like it's pleasing to the senses you see a beautiful form it's pleasing to the eyes peace of mind is pleasing to the mind one should work hard and not and and sorry work hard and worship the supreme lord by the fruits of one's hard labor for existence and that should be the motto of life your god brother satsurupa also told me the same thing that he may be overloaded with typing work Simil- similarly govinda dasi and gora sundara also want to be overloaded with work so your example are great encouragement for an old man like me i have got the same spirit of being overloaded with krishna conscious work but physically i am not as strong as you are all young boys and girls you can pray to krishna that i may get your strength to serve the cause of krishna conscious prabhupada is saying you can pray to krishna so that i can serve the cause of krishna you are doing so much service 
you are young boys and girls i am a old man pray to krishna that i can also engage in krishna service they want to be overloaded with work if we are not loaded with work of krishna which is authorized serving krishna we will be loaded with our mind's work mind will engage us in its own vegams manasa vegam jiva vegam udra usta vegam is vegams will we cannot keep quiet krishna also in the gita says not a moment we can keep quiet if we don't act for krishna we are acting for maya it is clearly said in the gita yudhyasvacha ma manusmire so ordinary we have to try our best our best capacity to achieve something and by krishna's grace all of a sudden we should see everything is there that sh- this we have read regarding krishna's being very kind upon us should be on the principle of arjuna followed the principle is that krishna was arjuna's most intimate friend he could have brought victory to arjuna without any endeavor by arjuna neither was that principle advised by krishna neither arjuna followed it so arjuna could get victory without his endeavor krishna could have just given he is a supreme lord arjuna was very arjuna knew this they could have won the kingdom without arjuna fighting but krishna didn't advocate that principle he didn't say okay you don't find some i'll get you the kingdom neither arjuna subscribe to that neither arjuna followed that he fought i understand that there are only three persons three persons of boston at boston but each of you can work for 300 person so it is not the numerical sense that works but it is krishna consciousness so genuine krishna consciousness is what we should aspire for no doubt while we are on this path we have to deal with our mind with our senses with our condition conditional responses suddenly we are not pure neither we can suddenly imitate pure devotees also no doubt our mind senses will have some legitimate so called demands mind will seek peace whatever is possible in the framework we give just like senses there is some legitimate sense gratification allowed in krishna consciousness we are not saying that everything you bar but we should also not go to the other extreme that you know only what is peaceful what is pleasing to me i will do we will get material pleasure but we will not get transcendental happiness we will not experience sweet reciprocation of the lord we will not see the hand of the lord arjuna could see the hand of the lord that's why when he couldn't protect the queens from the decoits he said this is the same arjuna same gandiva bow same chariot driven by the same horses but without krishna it's all null and void so we'll be able to see that how i'm able to do something wonderful but it is all because of krishna we'll be able to realize that is transcendental happiness we we'll stop here anyone has any question anything like to ask yes so sometimes we uh, tend to think that uh, peace of mind uh, is good for advancing the consciousness so we pray to deity that uh, he save all disciples in his service so is that sort of uh, prayer is uh, into sanctification or the we should know uh, krishna in the 12th chapter says if you cannot do this do this cannot do this do this right we should know in prayers also what is ideal prayer if we cannot reach that platform okay next level at least you are praying right you are you are seeking krishna's help you are not saying that i'll do myself it's better than being arrogant that i can manage myself but it's not the best best is just today i was reading prabhupada says 
you don't have to bother Krishna, just like a child does not bother. The parents know what is the requirement of the child. So the best is we, we simply serve Krishna. We know Krishna is our well-wisher. He is there in our heart. He understands all our needs. All will be provided. We have to sincerely endeavor. But we may not be in a platform. We may not have that faith. We may not have that nistha. We may not have that conviction. You understand? So we can. There are examples of prayers by devotees who are seeking help of Krishna in specific circumstances for some specific help. It's okay. Again, we have to see, um, you can ask for specific help of Krishna for your sense gratification. It could be specific help in the service of the Lord. Give me this facility so that I can serve you better. Give me good health so that I can enthusiastically engage in your service. That's one level better. Give me this position. I want to, you know, unless I have this position, I cannot serve. So there are different, you know, what they call levels of anarthas, which can be driving us. Any other question? You see, when we are talking about peace of mind, we should understand this mind and this brain is a yantra. Right? This yantra follows certain laws. Just like I can say we should not be concerned about how the vehicle moves. When we are having a vehicle, when you are owning a vehicle, we want to keep the vehicle in wheel balancing, proper air, filling airs, so that vehicle can run smoothly. Yes? So if suppose somebody is at the yantra level, trying to fine-tune the yantra so that he can serve the, the Lord, the motive is how we can serve the Lord, how we can be efficient, how we can be more this thing. Because body also needs, why do we sleep? Because body needs rest, brain needs rest. So somebody, if is seeking that rest, rejuvenation, relaxation, so that he can spring up and serve enthusiastically, that's an investment, just like a car. Why do we send for servicing? So that car gets maintained properly, so that it can be run this thing. Now somebody can be just at the level of yantra, trying to enjoy the peaceful yantra, peaceful mind. That is sense gratitude. But seeking rejuvenation. Why do we sleep? Why do we seek some relaxation? Because that's must. Otherwise, yantra will not work properly. If the mind is fully agitated and then you chant it, you will not be able to chant. It's a fact. No? At the yantra level, there won't be support. Yantra will not act. At the yantra level, it will not act. See, there are many things at the yantra level. For example, chemicals. If there is one small tablet, sleeping tablet, if you take the chemicals enter in the body, you will not be able to chant. You will try your best, you will feel sleepy, groggy and you know, all good intentions. You may have all audios to support, whatever. You will not be because at the yantra level, it's out of control. So we should be intelligent at the yantra level. We do some bit of some bit of relaxation at a yantra level. It is not material. What is the intention? The intention is to bounce back, rejuvenate it, and engage in service of the Lord. Do 
you understood so there's a little fine line seeking peace of mind for the heck of peace of mind is different from seeking some bit of rejuvenation for the yantra so that you can serve it nicely We'll stop here. Granth Raj, Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Shla Prabhupada ki.